Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag. By popular request, I'm here with the family in front of the Christmas tree, the lovely Mrs. E.E. V. Blog. The Christmas tree. Say hi. Tree. Hello. <laughs> Say again. Hi. And the Christmas tree. Huxley. Hi. Don't forget the Christmas tree. The Christmas tree's here too. The Christmas tree's here too. All right. So totally a person. Huxley voted to open first, yeah? Yeah. Which yep. one do you want to open? Which one? Choose any of these. Any of these. Count here. We got time. Any of these. Not that. I choose this one. That Ooh. one there. Okay. All right. So who's that from? Can you read that? Because I can't read that. <laughs> it's a bit small. This one is from Circuit Mess. Yes. Circuit Mess. All right. Okay. Can you rip that open, Hux? Or do you want a safety knife? Try and rip it open first. <laughs> and if it doesn't work, all you use it. The knife. Okay. <laughs> okay. Classical Huxley. Got another layer of packaging. There's a second layer of packaging. So, yeah. Oh. Whoa, this guy's going to sub <laughs> This person's going to sub How yeah. many layers, this Huxley? Layer. This is the third layer. And now we're oh, on the floor. Rolling, rolling, and rolling. now we're off on oh. big layer. You're probably childy stuff like a nah. baby. Um, no. Definitely some kind of circuit kit. Ah. Oh, lots of things actually. Lots of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. Actually, look, stickers. Stickers! That's mine. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm evil. Look. Oh. What is that? It's some kind of game controller. It's got batteries. Is it, it a Nintendo? <laughs> it looks like a <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> there we go. It's, got the shape it's of a, a uh, one of those do-it-yourself. Game controller things. I've seen mm -hmm. those before. I made one. But not but like it yeah, 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 you did yes, make one, didn't you? Yes, but it's build and called your own game console. <gasps> wow, does that Ooh. sound like fun? Yeah. I'm doing yeah. that when it's I'm doing that. It's so I can't Plus nine. Oh, nine you can, numbers. I'm sure you can do it, Huxley. I'm doing that next time we go to a lab. Cool. I'm doing that All right. next time. Alright, and we've got a... <laughs> oh, that's cool. Uh, love the shirt. Burn Best them shirt. all. <laughs> Burn them all. Well Burn done. them all. <laughs> so, nice. so, thank you very much, Circuit Mess. We have a um, do it yourself game console. So, that's a kit. So, you can, sol mine. So you can solder that, dude. Oh, yeah? uh, yes. You're going to solder it? Soldering. That? All right, we're going to do this in the holidays. Thank and also you very for much. The stickers. Oh, God. Oh, this is another one. Another one, Huckster. Oh, you're, being, you're just being greedy now. <laughs> Oh wow, he's strong. Huxley is strong. Oh, look at him. Go, Hux. <laughs> Go, Hux. Look at him ripping off the sticky tape like Oh, hey, he rips off the cover of <laughs> Mr. David. From. Tim, I'll go. Tim, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correct. Tim, Tim. Gilhurst. Trist. Gilchrist. From where? Victoria Which suburb? Victoria Park. Victoria WA. Park. Thank you very much, Tim. Victoria Park, WA. Now we know who it's from, so I from I wonder what's inside and there's another way. Well, what, look, we're gonna have to cut this tape yeah, open, yeah. okay? I need to say. What does Tim send? Oh, tandy. Oh, tandy electronics oh, oh look at that! It's a Tandy Electro. Oh, oh classic! <laughs> tandy oh. Electronics Worldwide Supermarket of Sound. Oh wow. Oh. Look at that. Oh, there's a photo. Wow, it's an inflatable. That is <laughs> That's a photo. Great. We got a photo. Oh, yes, Tim. Does everyone remember Tim with the mustache? Oh, and there's a... Um, when he visited the lab. And there's some, some sort of kit in there. Oh, wow. Ahoy, Dave. In case the obverse doesn't make it obvious, go on for a second suck of the sav. It is indeed. And too cheap to even buy your postcard. <laughs> Found this guy a few years back in an op shop. Never got around to sending and it got lost in the junk mail until now. Looks like Centron were based in Technology Park here in Perth, so hopefully yeah. I get bonus points for waving the WA flag. <laughs> what Something is that? Else. What is it? I don't know. It's like a power yeah. thing and phone activated switch. Turns out for all electrical appliances or by telephone. By <laughs> telephone? Oh, fancy pantsy. Don't know if that's. <laughs> oh. New beach ball! We don't have one of those. <laughs> we need a new oh, beach I ball. I thought it was like a, a football shape. Uh, what, you but never a, had one of those? No, I never had a tent. had one of I those. never, <laughs> you, you had one, did you? We when in the 80s? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tandy beach ball. We'll take it to the beach this yes. summer, yeah? We're out of beach balls. We're 100% right. out of... Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> but you're oh, still hanging them up in the 
that's true. Okay. Oh yeah, oh, yeah that's right. Let's put yes. it over here. Mrs. E.V. Blog is correct. They did use to hang them up in the shops. Candy Seven Hills. Yep. It's Candy Seven <laughs> Hills. Who <laughs> wants to open this package? How about Sagan? Sagan has an open one. Oh, this has been opened by... CBSA. Canada Border Services Can Agency. Oh, Canada Border Services Agency. Okay, oh. for Canada, I guess. Oh. I'm doing the next one as well. Wait, what is that? There's glue. There's glue. Oh, there, there. oh it is glued, yeah. Ah, it oh. is glued. Oh, it's oh, sorry. Who was this from? From Trevor. I can't pronounce that. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing <laughs> this wrong. Marka Roshkai, I think. Marco. From Canada. From yeah. Canada. <laughs> yeah, Marco. Oh, what's that? Oh, 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 oh. Accidentally cut through. Ah, oh, look at this. Popular electronics. Wow. Oh, Check wow. that out. So that many is too. that is great. So I'm batteries. writing that already. Oh, in cells. <laughs> well, yep. And something in here. What do we got? Whoa! It's a calculator. It's a calculator, but why can you see through the screen? You've probably never oh. used one of these at school. No. Why? Never seen why can you see through the screen like that? Double-ended one, maybe. No. What would be the advantage of being able to see through? Oh, oh, so you can type in numbers while you look at your page or something. <laughs> no, nah, it's actually for a teacher. No. So. What... They can type in numbers and see the students. <laughs> what if you shine the light through the back here? What yeah. could you do out the front? No. Nah, you've never used one. No. Nah, Mummy? Projector. Projector. This is EV Blog gets it. Oh, projector. It's... Oh, yes. It's a, it's a projector. projector. Do you guys have overhead projectors at no. school? No. No, no you wouldn't, use... would you? No. no. We used to, but now right. they don't. I like oh, really? Them, you used we, to have overhead projectors? Like a flat thing with a lamp? Yes. And a thing on top that yes. projects onto walls? Yeah, on, onto, onto a white wow. wall. Yes. Trevor, thank you very much. Uh, Trev's Bench. So I'll link in Trev's Bench YouTube channel down below. Check it out. Um, he recently achieved a thousand subscribers. Th Huxley gives it a thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs up for a thousand subscribers. Yeah. Thumbs up for 1K. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Well done, Trev. <laughs> Awesome. This one looks small. That one looks small. Well, you're small. Would you like to open it? Mm. You notice Mrs. EV Blog is wearing the merch. <laughs> they only give negative feet. They do come in girl versions. <laughs> available on the merch store. Uh, where does it say? You is say it a good show? You you wear it reasonably often, don't oh, you? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. By sometimes <laughs> she means and never accepts her in the videos. No, she does. <laughs> Albert Van, really? Van yeah. Damon. From the Netherlands. Albert, thank you. Hi to all my viewers in the Netherlands, the nether regions. How hmm. about sticky tape? It's sticky. Sticky tape is tricky. Oh, God. I hate okay. it. Sticky tape. Oh, did I just say snippy tape? Snippy tape? <laughs> is that a new type of trademark tape? <laughs> snippy you, tape. You can get a trademark on that, Huxley. Snippy tape. <laughs> snippy tape. What's in Ooh. here, Hux? Oh, lots of bits. Ooh. Oh, lots of bits. Bits and pieces of... Some. These look like horns. That looks like a syringe pen. Yes, it does. No, it. no, no, no. It's actually a syringe. Oh, so for I'm... what are we doing? Is it a paste uh, dispenser? Yes. Hi, David. Here's my solder paste dispenser that I've developed. Can you look at it if you have time? Cool. Thank you very much. Okay, we will look at the solder paste dispenser. Oh, there's the board. There we oh, go. Look at that. So we've got a little surface mount board. Have we got a stencil? Is there a surface mount stencil? Is there like a little stainless steel? No, Stencil or anything? No. No? no. no. Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, there. There you go. Is that 3D printed or is that is that 3D printed, you think? I know 3D print when I see one. If it is 3D print, then it is very good 3D it's print. It's very good. Mmm, okay. It so we'll like have a close-up squeeze at that. Oh, got some paste in there as well. Okay. So we'll have a go with the solder paste dispenser. Awesome. Ooh, that looks good. Okay, <clears throat> where's the next one? So you can open? No. Mummy, <laughs> Mummy opens the next one. I have three. Uh, Say you had one. Mummy is having one. Okay. okay. So this is and from... And the mum will open a floor. Right. <laughs> see what I said about Brady. Brooks in Tapa Nui. Tapa Nui? Tapa Sounds Tapa New Nui. Zealand. Yes, New Zealand. New Zealand. I don't know if you was in New Zealand. She knows her geography. Yes. <laughs> sure. Well, we've been there. Have we been to Tapa Nui? Is that North or South Island? I don't I've never been to, to New Zealand. I don't remember going to Tapanui either. Must be North Island. 
You guys are going to go in so many places. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> gone to New Zealand because I probably wasn't even born for that. Neither of you have been to New Zealand. No, neither of you have been to New Zealand. We'll have to go. Yeah, we'll yes. go. Yes. Oh, thank yep. you. <laughs> what do we got? Oh, don't 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 notes. read the note first. Don't read the note. No, notes are spoilers. <laughs> we don't spoilers. read notes first here. <gasps> but it's Christmas time and you read the note go, before mate. the present though. Well, right. Mummy's gotta guess what it is. Oh true. Definitely that makes sense. <laughs> but it's still Christmas. Oh wow. What is that? Wow. A bunch of wires. A bunch, a bunch of wires, wires on and a cell on a circuit board. Oh, yes, yeah. A circuit board. We there we go. So that looks like. Uh, let Daddy see if he knows. It's it's not audio. It's got big power. It's got four big power resistors on it. So I'm going to say it's <laughs> some sort of. It's got an LM3, a couple of LM384s, and I can't read the other chip. It's got two switches. It's got that'd be power. Yeah, that'd right? be power. And it's got a pot and something it controls something. It's some sort of controller for dial controller. I don't know. I maybe a no, there's no power transistor on there, so it's not like a some sort of heater controller or anything like that. No, some sort of controller for something. What is it, mummy? Hi Dave. I thought this might be right up your alley. Uh, managed dairy farms for 25 years. This makes them, there are many different makes and models of these on the market. The device this circuit is out of is at, oh, I think it's a... Oh, it's removed from something, is it? No, no, it's um, a power source to immobilise a cow. <laughs> power source to immobilise a cow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, serious? <laughs> It's a power source to win. That's a first on the UV blog. <laughs> That's a first. That's not exactly what it says. It says, <laughs> it amazes me how a simple 12 volt DC power source can be made to calmly immobilize a half ton animal. It would be awesome if you could explain what's going on and how it works, but maybe leave out the demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I think sourcing a cow might be a bit difficult. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? We tested on Huxley? Yeah. yeah. Who, who votes we test on Huxley? Me. Yeah. 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 Oh. What's the next? I, I'm, I'm going to be naughty and open the novel one. No, yeah. hang on. No. Um, I, well, I've got some postcards. This is a postcard from Goliad in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. Oh, oh, I've been trumped. I've been trumped. <laughs> I've been Donald Trump. Yeah. All right. You I've been Donald Trump. Trump. He got trumped. <laughs> I got That's trumped. That's a first again. <laughs> okay, who's, who's that one from? Mrs. Evie? Hey, hey, hey. Mozzie Oz from WA. Mozzie Oz. Well, open up Mozzie Oz. I'll open it. Somebody's, <laughs> oh, thank you. Yep. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Black hair shampoo. Black hair shampoo. Because it's a running joke, my grey hair in the light on the, uh, on the camera at the lab. Is thank you for it. Somebody's it's ordered for black, a... it provides you dark and shiny hair. Oh, not shiny hair, shiny hair, <laughs> dark and shiny hair. So, somebody wants me to dye. Is it dye? It says shampoo. Is it? It's just shampoo for dark hair. I have dark hair. Thank you very much. Hmm. Yes, we we'll have to open this one. Next. It's okay. already open. If you're going to send me something, you have to send it to mailbag. Otherwise, I'm going to think it's to me personally. So, who's yeah. that from? Elsa. Charles and, and Elsa. I think. Elsa. And Elsa. Elsa. Yep. Is that like in Frozen? Yep. <laughs> Big fan of here. Big fan of here. Oh, what have we got? Huxley, oh. can you read that in a nice loud voice? Nice, nice and loud. Hi, Dave. These tiny antennas mm -hmm. came from a Telstra modem. Modem. It has six from memory, similar to three here. They have some lovely close Colax. Teflon. 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 <laughs> Teflon. <laughs> it's insulated by the feel of it. And a gold plated miniature, miniature connectors. connectors look superb. Could you explain the in intricacies? Intricacies. Oh, that's a big word, Huxley. In designing in these antennas, please. Do, does the context Co Co coax, coax length have a bearing on, on the their performance? Oh, not that it matters to me. I'm a retired, retired DC 
easy to um one one, one megahertz um, hobbyist. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> Retire. Retired DC one megahertz hobbyist. <laughs> I get it. Oh, cool. that's funny. Awesome. We will have a nice look joke. at the antenna. Thank you very much. What's next? This one. Oh, another letter. Yeah, it's a mailbag. Um, it's from India. Hi to all my viewers in India. Wow. India. Don't get many from India. No. Um, uh, so, Jagger this is EV vlog. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Can she pronounce better? Savasaya <laughs> Jagannathan. Spot on. Spot on. Sounds spot on. <laughs> oh, we got a car. What have I got? We've got a... Is Ooh. it a postcard? No. Oh, it's a... Oh, well, no, a photo, I guess. It's taking photos of neon bulbs. Look at that. That's wow. very artistic, even, is it not, Mummy? Even, even more. Wow. That's view, artistic. Cool. Some more view and An alternating colors. Wow. They're really nice. I like those. Wow. That looks those really schmick. Those are good. Yeah. Man. I do admit they are. That's and it's just the beautiful. Western Gats. That's just beautiful. I think how you pronounce it. Very nice. Thank you very much. Okay. And the letter. So got postcards and oh, and a panorama. Then that's the oh, Western Gats as well. Yes. There we go. That is nice. Very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, I will read the note out later on the bench. Which country is that? Austria. Austria, not. Australia. Not Australia. I have Austria. a funny tale about Australia and Austria on Tell the us. internet. Tell so us. I was signing into this coding website called Scratch that I used to use a lot to make yep. my games and stuff. And right when I made my account, I accidentally, instead of putting in Australia, I you put, put Austria. Australia. <laughs> well done. And then I started getting messages from my friends on there saying, wait, you live in Australia? You, uh, you, you moved to in, Austria? You moved to Austria? <laughs> I did not know. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's Tindy? Tindy? Is that the first name or is that Tindy as in like the store Tindy? I don't know. Mm. Mm. What's in there? Oh, good. Oh. Oh. No, no, no. You go, oh, you've got to get between the bubble wrap. Greedy guts! I don't know. Something else, I think. Something else in there or is it just a letter? Oh, no. It's, oh, it's stuck to the letter. It's stuck to the letter and there's a lot of... Oh, there's diagrams. There's circle diagrams. Oh, it's got a it's got a battery and some LEDs on top. And there's circuit diagrams. Circuit on diagrams. Here. That's from Peter. Thank you very much. Oh, and okay. yeah, we've got a circuit diagram. So we don't know what it is. Usage instructions. We will have a squiz at that on the bench. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, what's what next? What does it do, Mummy? Yeah. It's this. Um, been watching. Da -da -da. This badge shows the complete mRNA sequence of the two most popular vaccines, BioNTech, <laughs> Pfizer, and Moderna. <laughs> that really? is classic. It does so by blinking the nucleic bases coated by colours with a rechargeable cell on the back for endless use. <laughs> <laughs> endless use, so you can walk around with your badge flashing your <laughs> vaccine DNA sequence. Is that? <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Yeah. That's a new one. That's there a you go, hugs. Who's this one from? Another one from Canada. Second suck of the sav. Radu Babos. 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 Radu Babos. Yeah? Yep. yep. See if you can open that one, Hux. Just, just rip it apart. There we go. Okay. What's that? Okay, it's a short little cliff letter. Short letter. And some... Oh, arty crafty things. things. Oh, cool. Hi Dave, my name is Radu Bobos, long time viewer, first time mailbag sender. I've designed these PCV coasters to help me out of my job. I work as, as an electronics repair technician. These have been very useful to me and to some of my work colleagues. I hope they are useful for you too. PCB as, coasters? As coasters they are pretty slippery. Cool, yeah. um, thank you. Bobos. Open one mummy. Okay. They're lovely packaging too, thank you very much. <laughs> Wait, don't completely tear that packaging. I want right. to keep that. Oh, you want to keep the packaging? Okay. okay. I'm going to... Oh, look at that. That's fancy. All the different footprints. Look. Wow. SMT footprint reference guide. Well, that's pretty schmick looking. Check that out. Wow, gold plated too. All the different references and on the back, ah, even more. 
Wow, well, check it out. Is oh wow. Can yeah, I actually keep these? Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually need these. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> yep. No, no, no. Ah, yeah, 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 it's on his uh Tindy store. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. I'll link in his Tindy Wait, store down okay. below. That looks very cool. This is gonna be useful yeah. for my me yeah, year nine science electronics exam. Oh, this one's exam. different. <laughs> yes. Oh, this one's different. There you go. That's got the schematic symbols. Actually, that's make pretty that, great. I think I'm gonna Okay, actually I think I'm gonna take that test next year. Oh, there you go, Hux. I'm gonna need these <laughs> for next year for my like electronics uh, science tests. Okay, we got some big boxes up next. All right. Uh, I'm gonna cut this one. I'm gonna I'm open this one. this one. All right, you're grabbing that one, are you, Hux? I'm gonna. So can I do this one? Oh, no, oh yeah. Okay, fine. I'll do the mega <laughs> one. I'm doing the mega ultra big fat one. <laughs> oh, I was gonna do that fat. with a knife. Uh, I don't. Okay, Hux. <laughs> Yeah, look, this one is a safety knife where you don't have to retract the blade. So what you do is you stick it in here like this. Oi, oh, oi. actually, who's it from? Mac Send them. Max Button. Max Button. Max Button, New South Wales, Australia. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much, Max. Okay, if we get that. Now, pull it. Pull it. Move the side. Good work, Sagan. There we go. Can you go down here too? Nice and easy. Watch out, Hux. Huxley, watch out. There we go. There we go. Big, a big voice, Hux. What does Hi, it say? Hi, Dave. Through these could be Thoughts. Thought these could, could be interesting for two bit tear down. Tear down. I need to get a bit medieval on this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Medieval means I might have to really chop into it. Oh. One moment, battery has run out of the top camera. <laughs> Please wait a moment for maintenance. <laughs> oh man. What do we got? It's, I got it. So it's, uh, I don't know what that is. I don't that know. <laughs> is out of an old, that's an old Energy Australia. That's a watt hour, that's kilowatt hour meter. Wow. So that's your energy and meter. That's your old school energy meter. Very cool. Look at that. Electromechanical. Wow. Fantastic. And we've also got this Energy Australia also, but I don't know what it is. Oh yes, that is a ripple control receiver. So that that what they do is they send a signal out on the transmission lines that mm. comes to your house and it's coded which turns on your hot water system at, oh. your, at, at off peak times and stuff. Oh. So it turns off and on your hot water system. Yep. So it, so it times certain times yep. in the day, then it sends pulses through. Yep. Pulse taker in basic words. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the pulse dealer. Cool. <laughs> They're going to be pulses. great. All right. Mm. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Wait. Wait. Daddy, okay. I can cut this. I have my own knife. <laughs> Hang on. Huxley, can you move to the side, please? Okay. I have my own knife to cut this. All right. This one is from um, Kurza. Who you may know, C -Z, um, C -Z -U -R. Caesar. <laughs> Caesar. <laughs> uh, I'll cut through it in about 10 years. Okay, well, how about <laughs> I use the real knife? Yeah? All oh. right. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> She's protecting Huxley. <laughs> I am a professional. <laughs> ah. Okay, let's have a look. Thank you very much, Kurza, for. Oh. Caesar. 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 I call him Cursor. Oh. <laughs> no, you think it's wrong. You think it's Caesar. 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 I, yes. I like As in Cursor. Julius. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Mrs. Evie Vlog has spoken. <laughs> this is big. Oh, I have spoken. This is really big. C-F-U-C-Z-U-C-Z-U-C-Z-U-C-Z-U-C-Z-U-C-Z-U-C-Z-U-C-Z-U-C-Z-U-C-Z-U-C-Z-U-C-Z-U-C-Z-U-C-
And, ta-da! What do you think that is, Mrs. E.B. Blog? Microscope! Mm, close. No? Nice. Mm. It's got lights. Wait, side lights. It scans things. It, it records, scans things. Records things. Uh huh. Well, there was a book. There's a book something or other in there. There's no, should be nothing under the bottom there. We can use this as a big box to transport <laughs> things. Mrs. EV Vlog is correct. It's a scanner. It's a document scanner. Oh, it's wow. a um, yeah. I've got the. This was originally a Kickstarter, and I backed the original Kickstarter way back. It, that was it says it, oh. six, seven years ago or something. <laughs> it says it on the side. <laughs> scanner. Yeah, it's a document scanner, a smart document scanner. It automatically, um, you turn the pages. It automatically uh, uh, flattens them out. So if they're like, if they're warped or whatever, it automatically flattens them. And um, yeah, it's very cool. So thank you very much. This is the upgraded jobby from the one I've got. Wow. Um, looks a bit more fancy than mine. So yeah, thank you very much. We'll try that out. At least now we've got good storage. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I'm turning this into a fortress. A yeah. fortress? Uh, yeah, you can't say no. I'm turning that into a fortress one day. And the foam. I reckon we can use the foam yes. for something. What do you think? Yep. Barricades for my fortress. Packaging does not go to waste with a 10-year-old uh, and a 6-year-old. I'm turning <laughs> that box into a fortress. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's an invading fortress, but with as many fig siege machines made out of that. Oh, well done, Huxta, what a shot! Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I got some... <laughs> Give it back! I didn't get it back! You go have fun with that, Hux. Hey, thanks, Hux, good <laughs> shot. Alright, um, we've got Daddy? two more. Yeah, after two more, Hux. Two more, Hux. Two more. Two more. Sagan, so you want to open that one? I'm opening it small. There's one, I'm there's one more. There's, there's one, one more, more for you, Hux. I'm pretty sure I know what this is. Give me Hux. Hux, this way. It's a multi-meter! It's a worldy meter. They've had like third suck of the salve. Um, K Wheats. However you pronounce it. How would you pronounce that, Mrs. E? They've either? done this three K Wheats. K Wheats? They've said this three times and you haven't learned how to pronounce it? No. Wow. No. There you go, Hux. This guy is forgetting. <laughs> Wait, is that, e is that even a word, forgetting? No. No, it's not. Forget I meant it a new forgot word. For forgotten is the word. Forgotten's the word. No. Forgetative. I think we have to oh, take we that to. off. We, we, need a, a, we need a new I'll word to the dictionary. It. I'll slice it. What's it here? It's K Wheats oh. again. Yep. Oh, nice case. Oh, Using that for something as well. That... Oh, catapult thrower. Yes, catapult thrower. What? It, if you don't need that, I'm using, I'm using that as a catapult thrower. Whoa, yeah, like Whoa. high-tech multimeter. No, it's not no, a multimeter. It, it's a... Really? Yeah. It's a what? No, no, you, you, I, I don't, don't think you've ever used one of these, mate. It's a clamp meter. It's a clamp? Ah. Oh, so Actually, it, so it measures... Um, yeah, it fits. <laughs> Wait, what about in mine? Oh, Ow. Uh, no, no, no. no Wait, silly. yes, yes, it did, it did fit. <laughs> hey, it snipped it. It's something I skid, but it some, did. Some batteries. <laughs> cool. Yeah, a clamp meter, what you do is you put a wire through here, mm -hmm. okay, and when current flows through a wire, there's a magnetic field around oh, there. Oh, and it will detect it. It will detect that and give you a measurement. He gave me electron cool. electrics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we had a whiteboard, yes. didn't we? We did a whiteboard lecture. Ohm, uh, the resistance is in... Yes, ohms. Ohms, yep. Ohms. And current is in... Starts with A. Amps. Amps. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, Santa. Eight more, eight more, eight cool. more. All right, Hux, come, come here, mate. Here. Come here. Yep. Payback. Oh, headshot! Oh, headshot! <laughs> All right. Down, 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 sit, down. sit, sit, sit. <laughs> sit, 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 sit. All, All right. right. Mm. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for sending in your stuff to Mailbag. Yeah. We had fun, didn't we, dudes? Yes. Yeah? I grabbed that. Mine. <laughs> ah, got him. Got him. Well done. All right. So, hope everyone has a happy Christmas and New Year. And we'll okay. see you next year. Bye, bye. 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 What a mess! 
So I'm back in the lab now. We'll have a quick look at a few things here, um, just in random order to what we just opened there. Um, very nice photos. And yes, I remember um, sending a BM-235 uh, um, to a 16-year-old in India. And yeah, sure enough, he's used it for many uh, repair jobs, learned many things. He's 17 uh, now, studying grade 12, and want to become an electrical and electronics engineer like you. I uh, want your suggestions on that. I am also thinking of applying to some colleges in Australia oh cool okay um I don't know how that works in Australia in terms of like coming here as a student and stuff um probably best to ask on the EEV blog forum there's no doubt um students EE students out there who've done it to actually come here and um study a college in Australia but unfortunately it's hard to offer like local advice because it's very specific like India will have a very uh specific uh, you know, re requirements for getting into studying EE degrees at uh, colleges and things like that. Um, so I'm not sure how it all works. I do know that in India, um, uh, electrical engineers are like highly respected um, there. It's like a, you know, it's a highly respected um, field. So yeah, highly recommend it. But no, I'd say get on the EV blog forum and um, talk about uh, coming to Australia for Australian colleges. Like Australia is a great place to come, um, but there's many other countries in the world. I guess it depends on uh, your entry requirements and stuff like that, which is like the easiest uh, to get into, but excellent. EE degree, fantastic. Um, your video is informative, like the Aussie accent of yours. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. Um, the, the Savas Sayer, is it? Jagan Nath Nathanan, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm butchering that, uh, from India. Fantastic. Great to hear of a youngster wanting to get into EE. Fantastic. So just here's a closer up of these uh, PCB coasters here. Digital Cool is the uh, Tindy store. So check that out if you want that. Look, that looks pretty comprehensive. I like that. We've got pin pitches, packages, we've got uh, voltage codes for electrolytic uh, caps and stuff like that. And a nice uh, schematic symbol reference as well. Linked in down below. Thanks, Radu. So here's some little PCB antennas. You have to get that black, bloody black solder mask. You have to get that in the right light there. Um, that's an unusual shape, isn't it? Look, I haven't seen that before. That's from a Netgear bit of kit. If anyone knows uh, that particular shape, I haven't seen it, and this one as well. Check that out. Um, so yeah, this is beyond my antenna uh, knowledge. <laughs> my antenna knowledge is great. There's lots of antenna aficionados out there, but I haven't seen one of those shapes before. So uh, there we go. You can see them from the bottom a bit better. But um, uh, Charles asks, like, uh, does the length of the coax matter for these antennas? Basically, no, it doesn't. Um, you know, apart from some extra loss or whatever, but no, it doesn't matter um, from the uh, performance aspect of it because the coax is a transmission line um, which will have a basically a flat response over, you know, up to X amount of uh, frequency that should easily cover uh, the range of the antenna. So it's the um, shape of the antenna itself. So this is kind of like a dipole type arrangement. So this this one's actually uh, rather interesting, uh, unlike just these ones which just have um, like an element going out this side and that side, so this is, I don't know, a fancy arty farty dipole, um, I'll call that, <laughs> there's a name for it, let me know. Uh, but basically, yeah, we've got a dipole arrangement with one uh, coming out here like this and like this. Um, why it's got this folded thing on the end here. I'm not sure, that might be a physical constraint thing, and of course they wanted to match the length on both uh, sides, so maybe they had a physical constraint and they had to fold it back there. Um, so I'm not sure that that's actually doing anything else other than length matching. But anyway, well, the interesting thing about this is it also, it's effectively shorted. Um, if you put a meter across the center conductor end here, you'll find that it's shorted out. And, but of course here, this is actually an inductor like this, a PCB trace at a high enough frequency, it becomes an inductor. So I think what this is effectively doing here is just a little ballon um, turn, I think. So uh, like a little uh, ballon transformer kind of thing. But why it's needed on this, I, I don't know. There's a lot of art and science which goes into antenna uh, design. And uh, yeah, I won't pretend to uh, know all that sort of stuff. But yeah, I think that's what's happening there. If anyone knows uh, exactly, leave it in the comments down below.
So here's this mRNA flasher, and Peter sells these on his Tindy store. Uh, linked in down below, M mRNA vaccine badge rechargeable. Um, if you're into your uh, wearable badges and stuff like that, you want a flasher. I'm sure it's accurate. I have no doubt that it's accurate. I don't know how long it takes to go through the sequence, but uh, presumably a very long time. Anyway, we've got a little uh, lipo battery on there, and I'm not sure what micros being used in there but um yeah is this open source so there's the instructions for it i don't know how long it takes to actually flush through uh the whole sequence each two bases are shown for roughly 400 milliseconds okay i have four thousand nucleic bases long okay so yeah you i guess you can work out how long it's going to take uh 20 hour runtime or 200 hour standby nice um and there's the schematic what's it using at tiny 24 jobby so there you go <laughs> that's pretty cool i'll uh, check out the tindy store if you're interested in your mrna badge if you're an mrna fanboy so trev sent in a 60 year old co oh, it's unbelievable like it, to me like 1961 is not that long ago sure it's before i was born i'm not that old but it's just yeah to me like the like well the 70s like didn't seem that long ago so the 60s to me also doesn't seem that long ago but it's like it's 60 years it's just insane anyway hands up if you were uh, reading this back in the day we didn't get popular electronics here in australia so i never knew about this the only magazines we knew about here were the ones that you could get um, from the local news agent and we just didn't have it so but the classic electronic stuff here we've got uh, construction projects radiation detector flea flower glow flea power glow light radio doubles as intercom a big slave for ag1s i guess that's another radio thing power a plenty low pass filter reduces tvi got construction techniques uh three hand soldering by john constock of course audio and hi-fi uh was a thing back then electronic features and new developments and CB goes on TV. Whoa. Transistor topics. Build 20 radio circuits at home for only $26.95. There's your three-handed soldering technique. <laughs> Ooh, transistor. Oh, transistor topics is a column by the sounds of it. New photoelectric semiconductor devices have been announced by Philco and Solid State Products. Uh, didn't, uh, who used to work at, did Bob Pease work at Philco? I think way back in the old days, um, they used to make op amps. The back cover, seven signal generators in one. Genius idea, a solder spool holder for the back of your multimeter. Ah, oh, that's, come on, somebody do a Kickstarter. Ah, uh, who remembers Heathkit? <laughs> Once again, you couldn't really buy uh, Heathkits here, I don't think. Um, but yeah, I certainly knew about them. Um, th there you go, classic, and he looks happy. Anyone still use 2N44 transistors? Equipment labeling simplified. Oh, look, you know I love um, <laughs> electronic analogy quiz. <laughs> Oh, too much fun. You know I love vintage magazines and I could like spend all day just like I spend a whole video going through it. But I shan't. So thank you very much. 60 year old popular electronics. Ah, oh, classic. It's in good nick too. Uh, Trev also sent in this uh, Casio a 7000G overhead projector. I've never had an overhead projector uh, calculator before. And actually, um, I can never remember a teacher ever using one so yeah i they just weren't a thing at um schools i've been to but anyway um the four n cells that's yeah they never really caught on these did they sort of i don't know you know they're used in a few uh calculators over the years but and a few other products but generally they never really caught on so can we turn this on and of course we won't be able to see that unless we actually put some up oh, yeah yeah th there you go you can see it Way there you go. It works, and of course, it's just a regular. If you the, the there's nothing projecting here. It's just an LCD without any of the uh, reflective or transflective uh, backing on it. And um, yeah, it simply um, shines through. You get a light on there, it shines through, and it goes into the overhead projector. And Bob's your uncle. And I think I've torn down a 7,000 before, haven't I? Um, I don't recall. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, it's not going to be too different. It's just like the LCD is uh, going to be different on the thing. But yeah, 
Here's our uh, main processor under here, and we've been mooned. It's uh, just on the bottom there, and um, yeah, it's basically just a single chip uh, solution. Would there, there might be some extra memory down on the bottom board. I can't remember. I'm not going to take it all apart. Anyway, thank you very much, Trev. Very interesting, a projector multimeter. Hands up if uh, your teachers use these, or you're a teacher and you use them. Well, you still do, because they still sell these. Um, they're still a thing. So thanks Trev, and uh, I'll link in his YouTube channel down below. He's been doing it for a couple of years, does vintage repairs and stuff like that. So if you're into that sort of stuff, give him a sub. Uh, he's currently up to 1,400 subscribers, but I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who like their repair videos. So Albert actually set up Circuit Mess uh, when he was 18 uh, years old, a Croatian uh, startup, and now they're doing um, STEM education kits like this. Um, it looks really cool. Um, so yeah, made in the EU, here it is, proudly on the side, designed and made in Croatia. Absolutely fantastic. Let's have a first squeeze inside. You can do it. Yes, you can. Um, yeah, I will uh, subscribe to EV Blog 2 channel, where I just hit 100,000 subs over there, and um, you'll probably eventually see a uh, video with myself and Sagan um, assembling this, because Sagan wants to do it. So here you go. Uh, the other uh, kits that you can get are chatter, little walkie-talkie, texty thing as well, is it? Um, and a watch, and yeah. We've got a creator's booklet. That's not how to solder, right, so that's just referencing you, right, these aren't the actual instructions, but that's what you'll need. Ah, yes, it's a new and improved version of the Maker uh, Buino, a game console created in 2017. Um, they sold over 12,000 of those, uh, collected their feedback and designed Nibble. Okay, yes, because I've done the Maker uh, Buino, Maker Buino thing, <laughs> it's hard to say. Anyway, uh, yeah, so it's an improved version. Of that, it's got a color display. Look at that. Invaders, stem box. Oh, it actually comes with everything. It's a complete kit. You get the soldering iron. I was wondering why they were like showing the so you get the soldering iron as well. They got a little um stand, little pop-up um standy thing. Geez, you could they're really quite sharp. You could really, really slice your hand open on those. Got to be careful with those. Um, we've got the sponge. Ooh, sponge porn. We can put water on that. We've got all the uh, hardware bits and pieces. We've got the USBs. We've got the laser cut acrylic case. Oh, the PCB looks jazzy, doesn't it? That's nice. So they've got the orange uh, solder mask with the white on there for the overlay and uh, uh, pre-soldered um, SMD uh, Wi-Fi thing and um, everything so you only do oh this is going to be real easy yeah Sagan's going to go Ugh, too easy um, nine and up yeah you could probably I reckon um, even Huxley uh, could do this um, six and up I think so maybe I'll get the Huxter to do that um, yeah because it's mostly done um, you're just soldering in the switches and stuff like that. Oh, that's that's too easy. So yeah, I would have liked to have um, seen more on the electronics um, soldering side of things than just the switches. But of course, I can understand like you know some of this is not suitable for beginners. Um, of course, but uh, did, yeah, you could have maybe made some of the components a bit bigger and could have um, maybe sold them on. But then uh, like the form factor starts getting tricky and stuff like that. So. I can understand why that's uh, not the case. But if the idea is just to get kids to, you know, look, solder a bunch of joints like this where they really can't uh, go wrong because you want um, satisfaction. And, of course, you want a kit because um, this might be, you know, put under the uh, Christmas tree with parents who might not even know how to solder themselves, right? So that might be the thing that, you know, they don't really know, so they're not going to be able to, like, troubleshoot this if it fails and stuff like that. Of course, I always say that I hope your project fails when you actually build it because then you have to troubleshoot it and you learn a lot from troubleshooting but you know if you're getting like a you know seven or nine year old or something to build something and if you don't have the skills yourself as the parent to actually oh, upside down all the electrons will fall out to actually uh troubleshoot it yourself um if it failed and it might <laughs> odds are high if you start doing you know surface mount stuff or more complicated stuff than just the uh, switches then yeah i can understand why they've done that so it's aimed for that uh, demographic. So that's really cool. So can we power this bad boy up? Do, do, do. There it is. <laughs> cool. There we go. Invaders, can we just, uh, no. Oh, I think I've lost it. Yeah, I've lost a cap. Invaders, start. Yeah, I'm going to have to replace that. To, oh, no, that's, that's my fire button. It's my fire button. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to fix that. I thought I saw that in the bottom. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That's all right. I got plenty of switches. No whackers. Oh, there's Albert. There he is. Um, <laughs> fantastic. Nice. I love the uh, promo photo there. Um, fantastic. So I presume that the instructions are online. Do we have a URL or a QR code or something to take us to the online? instructions anyway i'll I have to find it but that is certainly a very nicely uh presented kit so if you're interested in something like that I'll leave a link down below check it out so ours developed the spotty solder paste dispenser there it is yeah i don't think that's i don't think that's 3d printed i like the adjustable height here that that's bent in well, a little bit there so and you can see as i push down on that it's going to move a bit so that's going to move back and forth a bit there's a bit of play in that but anyway let's get a board out i'm not actually going to do any reflow or anything like that here i'm just going to see how much it actually dispenses okay my initial impression is that this could be a bit finicky but uh, they've got a metal threaded insert in there they'll like that okay so i'm going to wind that all the way back and then I'm going to push it through until it, until it comes out. Because you've got the initial, you got to, when you prime it like this, I mean it's priming the correct, whoa, look at that, that's really fine. Whoa, there we go. So I'm going to whack that in there like that. Wait, that, that just snaps back in, that's really quite nice. And then, yeah, you've got to, You've got to twiddle with this. Um, I This uh, didn't spin around completely. But anyway, I'm not sure if I can get this in the shot. Oh, yeah, look. Oh, look. Wow, check it out. Okay, I'm trying to get my fingers in the shot so you can see how, how much I'm pushing down on that. And look, you can see it. It's coming out. It's coming. It's coming. That's what she said. Oh, look, 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 look at that. Look at that, that's pretty, I can control that pretty well. I can control that really well. That's not too shabby at all. I mean, geez, you'd have a hard time doing, actually doing a board like this. Um, <laughs> the individual pads uh, and stuff, if you were at like, you know, it's, it's not like a um, air, what, like an air pump one where you actually dispense a little bit. It's more like, it's good for dispensing lines of solder paste. And there we go, I'm out now. I'm out. So I've got to bring it back, wind the wick up on my thumb screw at the end. And let's do this again. Yeah, but look, I can easily control, I think you can see that on the screen, I can easily control a little tiny fine line like that. I'm not sure what the kit comes with. It does it come with different size dispensers but that's that's like like I could go around whoa can I go around like that this is not the best being behind the camera like that oh and I just ran out <laughs> hopefully you can see that I've dispensed the paste around the outside like that it's a bit how you're doing that's me that's not the thing yeah I can go like that and slower or faster depending on how much paste I want that's probably a bit too much uh, for there, but you can see how, and then I can do it, of course, finer, like that. So that, that does work. That's not bad. So that does work. Um, Albert, thank you very much. That's not too shabby at all. So I'll link it in, presumably it's not very expensive. There's uh, not that much uh, to it, so I'll link it in. Not sure how much it costs. Find out on the website. But that could come in handy as a little solder paste dispenser. Do it yourself, Dan 2020 for the cow stunner. <laughs> Do it yourself, Dan is the man if you want to stun your cow. <laughs> like classic. I don't, if anyone knows how that works, leave it in the comments. The bellboy turns electrical appliances on by telephone. Um, I thought this would actually hook up to the phone line but it doesn't um <laughs> you just like it just plugs into the mains here there it is the bellboy model m oh, got to get the right angle 
made in Singapore, designed and developed in Australia, made in Singapore. It's hard to get that shiny stuff. But um, yeah, it basically listens for there's the, there's the sense basically uh, the volume microphone uh, volume kind of thing and it senses the like the phone ring it ring 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 and then you can um <laughs> something comes on for half an hour or you know eight hours or something like that so you know if you're worried about your home getting burgled or something like that you can phone home you know go to the phone booth and <laughs> <laughs> dial home and give it a couple of rings and it would turn your lights on or wh whatever it is that's plugged into here and a manual override oh geez <laughs> There you go, single-sided phenolic baseboard, although technically is that double-sided, it's soldered on the top there. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Has anyone seen the mains terminal soldered directly onto the PCB like that? Oh, that's so how you're doing. But anyway, yep, yeah, um, as I suspected, yeah, it's just got the microphone on front. Um, there's some 4000 um, series CMOS jobbies, except for this one, which is an M4081BP. And I can't find, that's a Mitsubishi, is it? I can't find a data sheet on that, but I did find maybe a manufacturer dial electronics. So that sounds too coincidental. Um, I think, yeah, that might be a dial-in receiver. Um, yeah, it might be purpose design um, for this sort of application, I think. And the rest of it's just, you know, timer. Um, logic and stuff. So yeah, <laughs> there you go. And a relay to do your <laughs> switching. Wow, that is so like, you know, like 1980s, early 90s. What's the date code on this? 90, 86, 84, 85. Yeah, like mid 80s, <laughs> like <laughs> classic stuff. Hands up if you had one. <laughs> This video is too long and Kai Wheats, I think, have had too many sucks of the sav in the past. Um, so I'll leave it in the comments if you want me to do like a, a like a 10 minute second channel video just taking these things apart. This feels cheap and plastic -y and uh, no, it's just, ugh, I don't know. Um, this actually feels all right, um, this uh, clamp meter, but um, yeah, leave it in the comments if you want me to do a video on these. Uh, they just keep requesting to send stuff in. I'm getting a bit sick of kai wheats. They keep pestering me on email. Oh, and sorry, I don't have those big um, kilowatt hour meters. They're actually in the car and I rode my bike um, to the lab today. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> that, I think they probably deserve like a second channel uh, teardown video on their own because they, they could be interesting. So, uh, in the meantime, you get my tappy fingers. So this Cursor or Caesar um, scanner, this feels like a real professional bit of kit. And I've used my uh, previous one that I got many uh, years ago, the original Kickstarter um, unit. And I've, I've had no uh, problems with it, but I think this is like a, a way updated uh, model. And um, yeah, it's like the build quality and everything is fantastic. So there's the camera down there. Um, it's probably like a Sony sensor or something. LEDs either um, side. Of course, the lighting for something like this is like practically everything. So is that, what's that? Are they some extra LEDs in there as well? Not sure, but anyway, you do get this um, side light um, thing as well. So uh, to spread extra light on there, and the whole idea is that this, is that is that a magnetic thing? Yep, that, that just sits in there like that. I love how they got um, pogo pin contacts in there. And that just sits like that, and that just lights up, gives a more, like, you know, multiple uh, light sources and stuff. And there would have been a lot of art and engineering that went into just making sure you light up. Anyway, the whole idea is that uh, it's got a separate camera button, so you don't have to touch this, because you don't want to be touching a button on top of this, because this can be flapping around in the breeze, right? So that's why you get um, the separate external uh, shutter button, essentially, um, to take the photo. So you put your magazine or your book under here or whatever that you want to scan, and um, you just press the button and you do the pages, and it's got all uh, fancy-pantsy software to take out, like any curvature in the page and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I'll give it a ball. What are finger cots for book scanning? Um, I, I guess like it feels natural that my, like, what is this for? This is for left, right and left. I've got them back to front. Um, and what do you do? Lift pages? I don't understand what um, that does. <laughs> I have to RTFM. And you do get uh, two separate options. You get the, um, the desk mount um, button, shutter button, and you also get a foot switch. Um, that actually feels 
pretty decent. Okay, I've downloaded the uh, software, which was uh, painless, installed it. Um, it asked for the serial number, which is on the bottom of uh, the device. I, I don't know why they bother. I don't know. People making hardware clones, maybe. Because uh, all the value, well, not say all the value, a lot of the value with this thing, of course, is doing the image correction stuff. So all the algorithms are to do. Um, you know, that sort of, you know, to flatten out the page when it's curved and to rotate it and crop it and, you know, format it into a PDF or whatever. Also, a lot of the values in the software. So they want to protect that. So as a serial number, you do not want to plug this in. Um, the first, I just plugged it in without having to install the software. It just did the windows bloop, 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 and it's kept on going. Bloop, 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 um, and it just wouldn't stop. So I don't know. I haven't plugged it in yet. I'm about to now plug it in. It is turned on. And uh, so now I've got the software installed. Um, I didn't use the disc. Got a single. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Not sure if you heard that. Got another one. Bloop, bloop. No, here it goes again. It just keeps going. It just keeps going. What the hell is it doing? I, 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 I got no idea. I can, it's just not stopping. Do I have to read the bloody manual? Do I have to plug it into another USB port? This is just dumb. Okay, I've plugged into a new USB port. Nothing this time. Huh? Okay. Right, so I guess the software is running. It doesn't tell me it's connected or anything. Like, it should tell you, like, it's actually connected. I'm just going to hit the scan button straight off the bat. Looking for device. If the device cannot be detected, you can try the following. It's powered up. It's working. I can see the image on top of the LCD. Nah. I desperately need to know how to use these finger cots. <laughs> Please wear the finger cots when you select facing pages, processing method. And removing finger I had them the wrong way, they were. Automatically. Put the finger cards on your yep. finger according to L, yep. left, and R. Put yep. your in the yep. top group the finger cards to the edge of books without covering the content. And keep finger cards vertical to the book edge. It looks like they've got some sort of scale thing on them or something. Is that, I don't know, what, what? How to fix detecting devices issue. Caesar scanners have adopted standard UVC and the mainstream operation systems have built-in okay. UVC device drivers. Speed up. No. Therefore, users do not need to install a driver and they no, can use no the scanners required. when the scanners are connected to computers. However, some users may... Scanner indicators will be lit. Make sure your device is on. on. Scanner indicators will be lit. On. USB logo and the zero zero appear in the LCD screen. Yeah, I've got a USB logo. Make sure the latest version of Caesar the software is installed. Caesar, there you go. Download from our official right. website. Caesar. <laughs> if antivirus is running on the PC, please add Caesar software into whitelist or uninstall antivirus by the manual. <laughs> then disconnect your the scanner, restart your computer and the scanner. Connect. Prior to Windows 10, check imaging Caesar devices. under Imaging Devices in the Device Manager. For Windows 10, check Caesar under Cameras in the Device it's, Manager. It's not there. There's nothing. If the following situations occur in the Device Manager, that means Caesar's driver is installed in correct Imaging Devices, Cameras. Cameras, USB. Right click the incorrect driver, then uninstall it. Disconnect the scanner, restart your computer and the scanner. Connect the computer and the scanner no, again. I don't even have a then, anything Caesar's driver under there. will be installed automatically. The you said it didn't need a driver, but now he's saying that you do need a driver? Like, the no, driver it, shows it's just, it's just not Caesar showing tech. up. Please get in contact with... A, please get in contact with... I haven't with had this issue with my previous one, so yeah, but it, it's not there. It's it's not there. There it is. Im imaging devices. X split V cam. Nothing under imaging devices at all. No nothing. Not a thing. I give up. I'm gonna have to try another machine. This is just dumb. Okay, I'm on my shipping computer and it just worked first go. So only a single 
and that was it. Um, so yeah, I don't know, something with my main desktop PC. Anyway, um, so here we are in, like I just press the scan button and then you can see, if I put my finger in there, it automatically tries to figure out where the book is, but, but I just had a tiny part of the cable actually hanging over here and it actually detected the cable up here, but it's not anymore. But yeah, if you get the smallest thing over here, it, it just thinks that, oh, that is your page size. I'm putting a pen under here. And it's like, yeah, nah. Um, <laughs> so their AI could be better. And then it's just continually jumping around like that. Anyway, that's with the back light on. That's with the back light off, like the one at the back. Um, the top light, that's with all lights off. So the light in here in the shipping room is terrible. So there you go. It doesn't look like the best. Uh, lighting does it anyway we now have uh, options for color black and white uh will it no it won't show you that in real time grayscale no um stamps patterns image mode uh not sure what any of that is so flat single page and then facing pages and then you can combine sides manual selection okay so i'm going to do my flat page like that I'm going to go auto, uh, like I've got auto exposure and everything. We can change our exposure, but I'm just going auto everything. And I'm just going to hit that. I've just hit my uh, button. And I've just, have I just taken, oh yes, I've taken a photo. Yeah, it's popped up over here. So you take individual photos and then you do PDFs later. This software hasn't changed since I last used it, I don't think. It hasn't changed much. I expected it to be, I don't know, um, it's got auto scan so that I presumably... We can flip the page over. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do facing pages like this. And I'm going to try and get the book open. This thing is, I'm going to have to go like that. It's, this will really test out the warping thing. Oh yeah, okay. Let's, so you've got to put it in the middle like that. And you can actually set auto scan mode I think like that so it's scanned it it's got both it's given it's giving two images over here so yeah three and four yeah it's got two different pages so if I get in there and if I change that will that automatically detect yep it's automatically detected that I flipped the page so you can see uh, this book's not great because it's not flat. Um, it's <laughs> probably the worst possible thing. But you can see how this is automated. You flip the page and it will, once it's detect no movement, it will actually auto do that. Yep, yep, it's automatically scanned the pages there. Ah, no, look, it hasn't done single pages anymore. Look, hasn't done single page, and it's got all the black space, so it hasn't detected that properly. It's detected that page properly. It's done an okay job with that. And that one, okay, so that's actually flattened that out, I think. So that's flattened that out. That's that's not too bad. I think, I think it's auto-flattened that, has it? I think it's done a reasonable job there. Yeah, it's flattened that page as well. Oh, we've got colour bleeding over there on the pages. But, yeah, I like. I think you really have to have... It's it's not all it's cracked up to be. I mean, I, I have actually scanned stuff with it before, but nothing this extreme. So, yeah, once again, the, the, the lighting on here is not the best. Um, it's, it's all about the lighting. There's, like, reflections and everything on that uh, gloss paper on the front. So it's not... It's not that good. It's not that good. Like the building, if you're relying on the building light, um, I think you're going to come a gutter. If we just do a flat single page like that, well, it's not that flat. <laughs> but if we just do a single page, is it going to white, like crop out some of the white stuff? Yeah, yeah, it does. There you go. It has actually uh, has cropped that out. There you go. That's not too shabby probably adequate like the actual that's the actual printout that's not the scanner there yeah that's the uh printout there that's not the uh that's not the quality of the scanner that was just the original printer doing that trying to print it in color or whatnot but yeah you might have to fiddle around with it a lot to get it to uh 
do the business. But yeah, I, I expected, like, I it, it's been quite a few years since I've used this, and I expected more automation. Like, I, I now, I, I do know that you can, I think, select the pages over here, and then you've got, like, a convoluted way to convert them into a PDF, to actually consolidate them into a PDF and stuff. I don't know. I think the user interface um, needs a needs a bit more work. Ah, uh, there you go. So, ah, so you can actually, it does finger removal. This is interesting, with finger cots. Okay, so this, is, I'm going to try these finger cot things. Okay, so I've got my foot switch now. Okay, so I'm going to use my finger cots. Don't know why they call them cots, but, so, presumably you can use it to hold that down like that. Okay. And, but I've got it, like, why do, why can't it auto-align? If it's going to be super intelligent, why can't it auto-align, like, the center of the book? Because you're going to keep on moving it. So if you have to shuffle it each time, that's a bit annoying. So here we go, I'm going to push my foot switch. No, oh, yeah, yep, it did it. And it's, yeah, it's actually removed it. Yeah, it's removed, it's removed my... It's removed the fingers and the finger cot. <laughs> there you go. That's not too bad. That's interesting, isn't it? There you go. It's done a reasonable job there. <laughs> don't mind that. So anyway, that's the Caesar salad scanner. Um, yeah, I, d I don't think it's much improved over the, my my original model, um, which didn't have like the fancy pantsy lights and stuff. But even the fancy pantsy lights, um, like on the gloss finish of um, something like this um, still leaves a bit to be desired so but they have put a lot of effort into it um, and I'm sure you can make it uh, make it work well I mean I've just uh, you know even though I have used it before like I've rarely had to use it I just got out to do some scanning um, stuff that I needed to once and uh, yeah I do remember it being a bit sort of finicky trying to put it into a PDF at the end but you can do it and it's got some nice AI and the little fingery things and the warp uh, removal and stuff like that it's okay it's just not as magical as they make it sound but anyway there you go if you want to check it out the Caesar I'll link it in down below